openness and flexibility are virtues which make leaders but as time goes by these virtues become lesser and the leaders lose their leadership positions but there are some leaders who keep up these virtues as and when they grow in the organizations today as part of leadership series by global tv we have one such leader whose openness and flexibility has grown as he has grown in the organizations dr mukesh sharma welcome to our discussion on leadership series in global tv thank you thank you mr tom thank you so much for inviting dr mukesh sharma is an author he is a storyteller he is a film director he is also a youtuber and he is a leader he is currently the dean of school of branding and advertisement nmims university he was additional director general prasad bharati and doordarshan director general of films division of india director of 14th mumbai international film festival director of doordarshan kendra mumbai he was producer in charge of children's film society of india and these are just some of the positions dr sharma has occupied in his illustrious career he has won many awards notable amongst them the best documentary by films division he won the president's award he also won the president's award for best children's feature film he has more than 10 national and international awards to his credit he is a leader with creativity dr sharma thank you for joining us today thank you thank you for that uh, beautiful intro thank you thank you tom tell me dr sharma i just wanted to check with you so you know many leaders uh, get their leadership skills and develop it from an early age did you have any uh, leadership uh, you could show some leadership when you was at an early age or you developed as you came up in your career father was in a government transferable job so we were not position at one place where i could try and show my skill the moment i was just trying to come out and showing my colors true colors <laughs> we were shifted so i think i was more of a dark horse because my family and everyone told me that you won't be able to do anything and you are more of an actor and you have got nothing and as usual and because my elder brother was a first class first my sister was a first class first in the university and topping uh, agra university and lucknow universities so i was never in academics i was not all that i started a little late but then as you say the dark horse always runs and later on and then touch wood god has been very kind uh, it, it was not looking back for me so i would say that it was both yes i i had chance to show but i couldn't show much because as i said there were various reasons family background and other factors nothing to show much but the moment i was independent because i came to mumbai in the year 1980 and the interesting thing is um, storm my my selection was uh, in the children's home society which happens to be the autonomous body under the ministry of information broadcasting was itself something which was i some sometimes i feel that it was maybe destined or the gods had put things in such a fashion that i was supposed to be there at the right time at the right place whether you show your leadership skills at an early age or not it comes to you if you have a natural leadership uh, talent yes. and you can build it up and yeah. the message for our listeners is that nothing to worry you can show your leadership at any point yes. as you build yes. up in your career provided you have the right attitude towards it yes so when you get an opportunity you go for it yes it was a good opportunity you got in the uh, children's film the society children's film society yeah so did you your style evolved around that you can tell us the story about the children film society so your leadership style would have evolved around when you working in the uh, children yes. film society well, no what has happened was just before that television was coming up in india and uh, television stations were coming up the first television station came in delhi in the in some time in the 50s and the second one i think in jalandhar because of the proximity of pakistan because they were also showing a good program so we also wanted that a footprint should be Uh, on the other part of that world so we were all happening and then the it came in lucknow so my first uh, i would say uh, understanding of media or understanding of things vis-a-vis communication was television and you will not believe they were looking for someone 
who could read uh, a sort of a news every special type of news every sunday and at that time there used to be a film movie on sunday in india yes, and yes. people would you know religiously yeah. wait and watch uh, sit down in the front of the television sets and in between this news was supposed to be read as a part of uh, government thing and they were looking for a new face and as luck would have it i got a chance and then i realized the next day when i was walking in the city of lucknow and everyone said hey guys you have seen him hey he is this he is sharma he is verma and that's how i realized the the power of television and the power of media and then i said i must try and and work here and do something but there was no such opening as it is it was at that time and it so happened by chance luck would have it i was just trying to because i did my 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 bachelor of science with chemistry botany and zoology and for me either i should have been a doctor or i should have gone into uh, a service which is uh, indian forest service or for, or or you civil service of the of the state government or forest department and i was preparing for that and i was selected actually written competition my interview was to be held and suddenly i found a post which came up in children's film society of production officer one post entire country and and there were three things required for that post one you should be a graduate which i was second your age should be 25 to 45 between but i was 24 and third you should have a diploma or something related to film now i had accept for graduation nothing else but i tried and and i wrote a letter and at that time the dean of indian cinema dr v shantaram who has given so much to the indian cinema a lot of people will know about it people can google and find out about dr v shantaram he was the chairman of the children's film society and i remember he had given his views my aims and ambition children cinema in at that time there used to be a magazine known as illustrated weekly of india yes so the times yes. of india group yes and the editor at that time was mv kamath now tom yeah. surprisingly see the destiny how it plays its role that mv kamath was supposed to meet me after about say 25 years and become a father figure for me that's another story which i'll tell you how and and it's very emotional in fact that part but anyway mb kamath wrote that article as an editor and i read that article so when i read it i was actually talking shantaram now uh, this was my preparation for the interview nothing else now i'm using all my skills my brain nobody is helping me guiding me in this factor and i'm in a small town please understand i have to come right. to mumbai i have never seen this city in my life never except that my brother was here he had just been posted here in the bank so that's the thing when because of that i thought i i can come to the city now i wrote a letter to dr shantaram saying that no doubt i am this age but at that time if you remember sanjay gandhi mrs indira gandhi son was making a lot of hue and cry in the country and he was very young so i said see young is something which is why you want to stop because of that i am young why don't you just call me and just a, it's a one year difference so believe me whatever little english i knew and whatever i could understand i wrote in my own way and said that if you uh, and uh, even even film i said i have an experience of television because i was reading news and doing some no odd jobs yes. and i said i'm a graduate i said but call me i'm not asking you for any money to be for traveling allowance i'm not asking you to put me somewhere and stay i will come on my own and i will just face the interview and that's it just at least call me and as luck would have it see mr shantaram was looking for a young guy and he was looking for somebody like me maybe in his mind so to cut the long story short i was invited i was called now i was all set now at that time the train service from lucknow to mumbai it start leaves at 10 o'clock and next day about 36 hours it would reach mumbai in 4 o'clock and yes. as luck would have it my sister started you know cajoling and crying and saying that you will go brother has gone so nobody i'll be left alone and this and that i said look i am not going to be selected there is i don't even qualify why are you worried i'll just go and I take a trip to mumbai and come back but in all this you and cry sir i missed the train oh my god so it's like leaving on a saturday reaching on sunday and monday is the interview so saturday train gone so i cannot reach now my i be worried so father said during the course of the day maybe better sense prevail so she said okay you go but even if you are selected you will not join i said no i will not join i promise this and that and i did everything as usual like a brother and by evening my father said you take the lucknow mail and go to delhi so we okay. went to delhi and delhi next day i could get a train which reaches in 24 hours monday morning and interview was somewhere like 9 o'clock so it was cutting it very fine but all said and done my father was not something on a very high post he was you know a simple i would say class 2 officer but he gave me 800 rupees i still remember air fare it was big amount lucknow from delhi to mumbai ki just in case you miss it then you take the flight and a man who has a salary of about 1200 rupees or something and out of that 800 you give me how the house going to run there was no savings and all that at that time like this what we are thinking now anyway i just took that money but i took a risk 
as my train was entering from lucknow to delhi in the morning in the yards the another train was coming out from delhi to mumbai and i jumped the tracks which was something you know nobody would think of it and i jumped and i caught the train and immediately the tt the ticket collector came to me and he just gave me a slap on my face i was looking very he said you want to die what are you doing i said look i'm a student and this and that i just tried to work out i said look i don't have an i have an interview and this is important to catch so i'm sorry i really made a mistake and i will see to i would note anyway he gave it to me and i reached next day somehow and it was pouring in mumbai i have never seen so much of torrential rain and i thought that the city is going to be drowned completely but then somebody said don't worry it is near the it's seaside normal. and this happens yeah it's okay so i went there and i i reached my father brother's place he was all you know worried what happened i said i'll tell you the story right now let me reach the place and i went there for the interview now mr shantaram himself sitting and there were other people and when i saw him the moment i entered they said mr mukesh sharma i said yeah i am here and i entered and immediately he started talking and i was just trying to bring him somehow to his thoughts and his ideas about children cinema about how to you know how to make children films how to produce them how to do what, what all stories we should see and what all he has said i was talking about it so he was just saying yes 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 and finally i think in 10 minutes he said okay i've got my candidate so uh, the other people who were sitting there ministry people he said sir but we need to uh, no uh, no 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 we don't want to interview he is good <laughs> and i was number 2 and i was actually pinching myself i said this is something you know you can't imagine like this. then he said i'll give you 1500 rupees i said yes sir okay you have a place to stay i said yes sir i got can you work from tomorrow i said yes sir see he is all right so why should i need a stood up and everyone was looking and i was again i said tomorrow you come to rajkumar studios and you are there and i want sharma he used to call me sharma i want sharma you to work very hard okay i have taken you with all these people though they are not reputable but i want you to work it was all i don't know destined the plan but that was the first opening when i met him and sir after that once i got that opening sir i never you know let that chance then i work 18 hours 19 hours 20 hours and sometimes it was you know beyond the call of my duty i was doing it and that's where i could learn so many thing and that's where i could build up my stamina my caliber my how to say my style of functioning so many things that i could then realize ki yes i i can be a good leader now and i can but the human angle i never lost out during my entire career so it it shows that when we get an opportunity we yes. must jump for it and work hard to achieve yes. what I'm we sure. need yes. to do yes. what we need to do yes. i would like to ask you one question like is there any person who has actually changed your outlook on leadership see what happened i learned from shantaram ji and then i had a chance to work with not one but three four doins in the cinema like jaya bachchan shabana azmi i had work amol palekar now they these were the people who were the chairman of the society and since society was a small affair it has a, a one production and one lady and two cameramen and others people we would hire on contract so there was no regular staff but the access to the chairman and all was immediate so it was you know like one to one so there was a great learning of course from there the chair never made me you know it never went into my head i would say that once i completed my children film society tenure i decided i said i should now come out because i have become too fat in this well and then it so happened that i got selected through upsc you know public service commission okay in, uh, there was a service known as ibs like ias and ips indian broadcasting service and for okay. for people with they were selected for radio and television right so i got selected for television five to six people only in a merit list and then i joined television as it is but at the same time see destiny was taking me to saudi arab because i was also selected in 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 jewel or some places there as a video chief for some, some at that time they were paying me 4500 riyal and a company house and education everything but somehow destiny gave me this also so i i jumped here i chose so children film okay. society tenure was mostly on on three years contract so i was looking for a permanent thing and you know try to work it out anyway so this i did it and then i was in doordarshan now during my course of doordarshan i had a chance when prasad bharti came i had a chance to work, to work with one gentleman known as mb kamath the same mb kamath who was the editor of illustrated weekly of india and was a times of india's correspondent in washington yes he that old man was 85 plus and i was say 40 around 40 45 years old and at immediate first instant he had a liking and i was actually i always thought him as a father figure not on everything was going fine but one of the thing which i which i still remember and i can cry if i if i go into that you know go into delve into the entire episode he called me he he used to be he used to stay in in uh, manipal manipal okay. is in in the south and and uh, there was 
big big uh, medical college and education institution manipal of pais there yes and he then invited me for a for a seminar or something i said sir i'll come there so i was supposed to travel from lucknow uh, from mumbai to mangalore and from mangalore the car would come and take me this is when i was in doordarshan and he was the chairman now see and i was suddenly having a severe headache during the flight i don't know why severe headache and vomiting and either my bp was high as it is just now you mentioned that i worked in so many departments yes i was carrying the load of all these departments and since there was a commitment kamal sahab had called me so i said i'll go there and by the time i reached i came out of the airport i was actually you know quite unwell and here i see this old man standing the chairman of the prasad bharti this come to receive me so i didn't realize it i said hi kamal sahab how are you how are you, you are here so who is coming sir he said baba you are coming i said yeah i have come but you have come to yeah i have come to pick you i said you come to pick me come on sir what's wrong i said sir you have traveled all the way 3 hours at the age yeah. of 85 and here you are going to go back with me for what i would have reached and i was quite pissed off actually i said this is no way and then suddenly i started crying i said but why are you giving me making me do this when i became so emotional i said i said but you should not have done he said no 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 and here my head was you know in a different shape and i was having high bp but believe me i don't remember i passed out when in the car after two three more uh, i uh, once i had clear my you know after my vomiting and mr kama throughout this journey was only you know doing and i was just putting my head when i reached there i found myself in kasturba hospital the medical college which you have there the college student and at 11 o'clock i regained consciousness and here i find mr kama they still sitting there with a drip in my hand and and i was crying i said sir but you should go no 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 i am okay you are fine mukesh tomorrow we will have this you are okay i said okay he doesn't have a padma bhushan doesn't have to do all this sir so that made me realize that one has to be down to earth and you can learn from these people sir i was lucky to have met such people in my career who actually at every stage they showed me light this is how it is done and and in fact this reminds me another interesting story uh, which will culminate in this but that will also give you an idea as to how leadership evolves definitely, during time definitely definitely this is when in the 80s when i was in children's in society i was also an actor actor in the sense i used to do plays uh, right. and i i and i had taken permission to do it though i was working in a department and they said as a extra curricular but if you earning anything you are supposed to pay to so i said i'll do all that anyway once i finished my uh, rehearsals of the play in the television station in mumbai i came to know that the new director was taken over his name was abdul sattar tatari and he was from lucknow and i was very happy i was quite excited i said i want to see him today and i just rushed to his room and here was his pa he was a south indian i won't name him and he said sir uh, you are i said i am mukesh sharma mr tatari i know him he is from lucknow so can i see him and i was all excited he said no no you have an appointment i said no he said but how can you meet him without appointment i said you try and tell him tell him that i am here he said no sir You know, no, sir. Without a man, I will not allow. And I was looking more like a chogra those days also. So he just made me sit there. I said, "But please, just just check with him." He said, "No, no, he's very busy. Whenever I is very busy." For fifteen ten minutes, he just made me sit there. Then I came out of it, and I just, just then I I came out of this room, and then I saw the next door, which directly opens in his room because otherwise I was go through the PA. So I just put the handle down and opened it. I mean, here I found Mr. Tatari. He said, "Okay, sir." I said, "Sir." He said, "But that fellow is you're busy. Are he is a fool? You come, come, come." I said, "But he made me sit for ten, twelve, fifteen years for no rhyme or reason." He said, "No, no. Then we of course discuss family and this and that, and that was okay." But after twenty years, the same Mukesh Sharma is now in the same place, and the same PA is there, and now I've come as a director, and he's there, Excellent. and he didn't recognize me at first. I said, "Hello, I'm so and so, so and so." You remember, I came in the eighties. He was looking. I said, "Forget about it. Listen, listen. First of all." you have a name something outside was written to meet the director 3 to 4 pm time timings i said remove that first thing i want you to throw it out i want that and listen jani i don't know whether you remember or not but i re- remember very clearly i don't want any guy to sit there outside whether it is my office or private just let them come because what we are doing here is not something confidential everything is open to everyone if there is anything i'll let you know but to me i think i will work like this second thing i said i don't want to sit on the chair what sir i said i want to sit on the chair give me a standing tall you know a, a, a plate with 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 a tall stand so that i i work standing i want because i don't like sitting on the chair it makes something people go you know haywire he was all shocked he said what and third i said i don't want any person on the on the gates 
no security, no this and that. Anyone who wants to come, of course, you check it, but very politely, we need to tell because this is a place where artists come. This is a place where we are dealing with, with human. We are not dealing with commodities. And sir, it was. A channel which was making about 5 crores Indian rupees, I made it push to 40 crores in five years' time. Oh, I got great. the best Kendra Award from the Vice President of India. I mean, the entire Marathi channel in the, in the country, it was number one. First time they were thinking, are you sure the government channel is working like that? I, was, I took all the shareholders' money in my channel. I said, nothing doing. Excellent. Like Excellent. But the thing was, was no, I, it's like, unless you own something, unless you say it's my own, it's my work, it's my work, which is, I'm doing it from my home or from my house, then it was. I think there are two lessons which I can uh, think of. One is, uh, which I told in the introduction, the flexibility and the openness, which is yes. there inbuilt in you. Yeah. Secondly, a leader should own what yes. they are working with. Then it works well for all everybody around. Uh, Dr. Sharma, you know, many a times uh, in a leader, like you are a film director, you have worked as an actor, all of these things. So there are certain skills which you have. But is it essential to have such skills to become a leader or leader can be even without such skills which are related to his area of work? See, what happens is I feel the leadership comes out when you are in hot waters. Okay. And the people used to tell that the, the Mukesh Sharma is like a tea bag in a hot water. The more water is boiling, the more color will come out of him. He'll be able to deliver much better. And believe me, I used to enjoy when I was in troubled waters because now I have to have a solution. And my mind is so fertile at that time that you can't imagine I'm thinking of 10 things I can do it. And I used to deliver that way. So one of the reasons of your leadership coming out is also when you are in, 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 in such areas, in troubled areas where you have to immediately think and come out with solution and a solution which can help everyone. So, which is sometimes God-given, sometimes your own experience of things, sometimes, you know, the way you have learned things, a lot of things do matter on that. So that tomorrow, if I have to, you know, deliver anything and nobody's around, I can do it. And that is why one of the reasons that my channel became number one, because I knew what I'm doing. I knew my job. If an editor couldn't do, I said, tell him, you, to, you go, you move. I'll sit down. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. If, if an actor is not there, I said, remove him. I'll write the script. I'll do it. Or I, I will try and, and do it. Don't worry about it. So... I wanted to learn everything. And then also when you know everything, and when, when you know everything, more like a master and not like a jack, then you are a better leader to deliver because you can always there to support people. So it's important that we acquire the skills in the areas where we work so that leader can show. It's like yes. walk the talk. It's like yes. you lead from the friend. Yes. It is also possible when you get an opportunity, you can learn the skills provided yeah. you put yeah, in that not? effort. You, you learn from everyone. Even during my production time, I used to learn from my cameraman. I used to learn from my sport boy, from my music guy. Common sense also plays a very important role in this. You don't, can't every time think of things which are out of the box all the time. So you are saying that as a leader, we should be able to take a spot decision and it comes out of your common sense and learning. Yes, yes. Because right. every time you can't think out of the box for such situations. You have to right. adjust common sense. Right, right. See, one of your mottos is being service to others and the society. And leaders in general, see, there are leaders are there in all areas of work, like in private sector, in public sector. How important a leader should consider service to the society as one of the pillars of their, uh, their life? If you see, sir, health is one area where you are doing service to society. If you are in the army, you are doing something to the society. Even if you are in business, you are doing something to the society. So if you see every everywhere people are working, they are directly or indirectly doing something for the society. Now, how good or how bad they are doing is a question one can ask. In my case, how could I serve the society as a public broadcaster? So my first mantra was, am I serving the consumers or am I serving the citizens? Because if I'm serving the consumers, then I must have a programming which is as per their liking or as per their taste or whatever sells, I must, I must try and make it. But if I'm doing for the citizens, then I have to have a disciplined programming, a programming which can, which can, which should be for all ages. I must be able to cater to, to uh, say a majority community. I could cater to the minority community. I could cater to the old man, I senior citizens. I could cater to the child. Then I'm doing a public broadcasting. I must empower women. I must empower girl child. I must empower education. But this programming doesn't bring money, sir. So 
if you can do the best of both you try and ensure that the basic thought is not lost but you will package it and market it in such a fashion that it can be one shade better than the net, uh, otherwise what programming people are doing the commercial programming and this worked for me sir like these days sir i have started a channel where i'm telling the story during these covid times in 3 4 5 minutes i finished them a person telling a story who is interested in listening to you unless he is able to catch your attention yes right unless your story is 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 narrated in such a fashion that i don't give you a chance to just you know blink or go out till you see ki what happens so there are only two strength of my storytelling one is the way i tell one the story so the content has to be strong always whatever you do that's why you find some of the good films not you you may not have big stars in it but all that but you find it you always like them just for the simple reason that it has a strong story point correct it's engaging so 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 the story in in public service broadcasting has to be something which can connect with people so i started in during my time sir i started four in programs nobody was am talking way back in 2000 everyone said live phone in program sharma you want to take risk what you are doing now i mean what people are doing now in streaming i did it 20 years ago and live with the people common people they said they will say anything i said don't worry you have to have faith in your people and it works sir so right from a from a hello sakhi i used to name them hello world every program now hello sakhi was for women and one to two all the time any problem whether legal or medical or this uh, they will come and you can talk to them on phone online and help you hello doctor in the evening anybody who wants to have any understanding okay you go there hello officer a person from municipal corporation would come and help people out so i was trying to serve people and you know ensuring that the public broadcasting and i was making money on these programming it is just not that this programming was there it was getting so you are saying that we should be able to connect with people understand their mind and then it becomes service to the society because all of these programs are related to society at yes. the same time you are also making money yeah because because i was getting numbers for such so the sponsor was there to give me the bottom line the bottom line was there very nice so do you feel leaders in public sector or government should have some skills which are which are specific to them so that they can come up in their leadership ladder yes i i feel because what has happened is in during my course during a civil service i have seen all sorts of civil servants civil servants who are just you know i would say just just give them something and they they can go ahead civil servants will take time to understand things what they are doing but just because he is a civil servant he will say no what i am saying is right which i have never done it i have never tried to say what i am saying is the last word no if you can convince me and with me the team go ahead i'll take you and i will put it so my motto in life was very simple either i'll follow you sir or you follow and only we can go ahead because there is no point arguing about it that this is right okay i'll follow you but if you fail then you be prepared for the consequences and if i fail i'll be prepared so what has happened but in the government there is no, nobody take the responsibility of these things sometimes even if they feel in my case i made it clear i said yes if i am wrong you tell me wherever i am wrong so it so happened that i i could manage to work out because i could take everyone together in fact i was more of a leader and less of a boss throughout my thing and you must know the difference between the two it definitely definitely there are so many things where where a leader will say no he will come on respect in my case a uh, uh, boss will command in my case i never commanded respect respect came on its own so there were so many you know things which could work out with the people and that helped me because i feel in the government service people should not work like a boss they should be more like leaders then things will fall in place so you are saying that you are one of those leaders who earned the respect rather than demand the respect yes yes i would in when i took over the as i told you the first thing i said i don't want anyone to stand outside and wait and all that because that was a great learning for me 20 years ago but even while walking around i wear i i was always in a you know suit and tie and everything speak so that nothing about it i said the, the whatever is here inside that's more important just forget about it but i would then pick up even a cigarette a packet lo- loitering in the in the my premises or even uh, you know a- any paper or anything and pocket people would watch that and that was indirectly i was telling them look even a dog who sits in a place he also cleans the place and sit we are human beings so don't throw things like this now every time you tell them right on the board and notice what doesn't work cleanliness has to come from within once i started things were they were there so you have to set examples also every time sometimes you have to do it more prominently so that people who who understands late can also understand 
everyone can understand immediately it takes time for some people to definitely understand. definitely so we have to show and then yes. people will follow yeah. Yeah. do you enjoy your leadership roles i was more of a, i would say not exactly a leader if you say i was more of a team player every time hmm. leader i was there when there was a problem then i would say okay okay i'll take a call and i am responsible but when we were playing together i was one of the party i never said that i want to take this credit for this i don't know when my programs when i used to do programs in television huge big shows you know multi camera setups and we are booking a hall and about 3 4000 people are sitting there and all top celebs are there you will never find me sitting in the first row never with the with the whether even the prime minister is there i will not say unless protocol demands that the director has to i would be running around all the time here and there and trying to ensure that there is no lapse in the programming there is no gray area anywhere and people still remember that and then some in fact i remember even when i became additional director general so a major general from the army was sitting there so he said he is an adg he said you know what is the adg in army he is the rank also and so you think he'll be running about like this he said yes but this guy is different so these posts and position they come and they go but it, actually if you are a if you are a person who can deliver things and if you know that you know this will help people and if you are helping everyone what is the harm in it i say say it that way it's a more of a human approach nothing else very nice very nice i think leadership is more of uh, how you handle your yes, position yes. it's yeah. more of doing things so that people will remember you you for what you did tom sir today still people call me up to say they want this coverage i said look i retired 4 years ago what's wrong with you he said oh we thought you are still there so that is what i left behind yes yes very nice very nice so if if you have to give two advices to the youngsters who are aspiring leaders what would that be to become better the, leaders the first thing sir the first thing is which i i hate is the ego what we call the ego okay aging god out i will call it that i am finding the youngsters of today mostly i would say too much of ego too much of ego and i don't know too much of they, they are not down to earth they, they are not polite what is the harm of being what, what is the harm of saying you watchman good morning how are you kaise ho what is the problem in that i fail to understand that's why when i picked up telling stories i picked up such stories only which may click with people and understand look it, it's not that because you have got so much so you are wealthy and you have got so much of money so so you no it's not that that's why they say when a tree is full of fruits it goes down what we call in hindi jab ped phalon se lag jata hai to jhuk jata hai so when you have got so much of knowledge you need to be down to earth but unfortunately that is one thing they should throw it out before they start or embark on anything and other thing i think once your ego is out not only one lot of things will follow let me tell you it is the biggest culprit in anyone i me this should not be there it has to be we it has to be us it has to be all so uh, you are suggesting that uh, the, the the youngsters should first get rid of their egos if you want to become a true leaders yes, yes, yes. in the right sense where you can get things done where you can take the team along with you it's going to be more of inclusiveness in your yes. in your approach yes. rather than i and uh, you me i me myself no we don't need yeah that. so nice uh, dr sharma talking to you it is uh, very very enlightening and uh, i am sure with your approach you will still serve the humanity around us for long long time to come and i think uh, your leadership style which i i keep learning about this leadership style called servant leadership which is yes. a new concept which is in place yeah. and i think you started practicing this much much before yeah. Yeah. the concept itself came into existence yeah. it's not your position it is your work what defines your position and your uh, worth second is i have always promoted working backward rather than working forward okay is the goal in front see the size of the goal come back see the ball size length so that everything is measured you have one backward planning and now you hit in one go it should go you don't have to see that i'll take one more chance planning is based on the goal in front of us yes so it's always very the backward nice. planning which can take you forward very nice very nice so thank you so much i hope your stories which is kahaniyon ka anokha andaaz 
i hope uh, it will enlighten uh, the generations to come because they are simple very nice and your leadership skills will continue to serve the humanity and uh, wish you all the best uh, dr thank sharma and thank you so much for your time it is really really entertaining and enlightening i would say thank you thank so, you thank you tom ji you you have been you, you, you in fact you made me do all this thing come out it's see your job is very important as an anchor it's not easy to be an anchor but you could bring out so many things from me i also don't remember thank you so much for inviting me once again thank you